Welcome to Little John Sean. Today, we're going to be making this awesome fingerless gloves inspired by one of our very own members of her Facebook group, Maha Saeed. She's an awesome, talented woman. I hope you enjoy this tutorial. Hey everybody, welcome. Thanks for joining me. Today, we're going to do something a little bit special. This pattern was inspired by Maha Saeed. She's a member of my Facebook group. I'll leave a link for my group in the description box below. I love these fingerless gloves I made. I've seen her made it make it um do you know how fingerless gloves are usually made in the tube going up and down these ones are made going sideways they're so simple and cute i just had to ask her if i can make the pattern so she gave me the permission so that's what we're going to do today and if you like this video please don't forget to click down on the link below and subscribe to my channel we'll hop right into the tutorial Today, we're going to be using a 5mm crochet hook. You'll need some needles and a scissors. And we're using worsted weight yarn. I used some um, baby green yarn that I found at Goodwill that was sitting in my yarn stash. And I'm using black and lion brand yarn. Typically, I, we usually make our fingerless gloves this way in a tube. But the way Maha, excuse me, Maha Saeed made it, she made it going sideways, which is very unique. So make sure you guys check your gauge. I did a total of 36 rows to fit my hand, but I tend to have baby hands. <laughs> but also different yarns give you different sizes. I did this with, um, what was it? Uh... Super Saver, Red Heart Super Saver yarn. Instead of 36 rows, I actually had to do, um, I believe, 30 rows on this for that yarn. But like I said, make sure you check your gauge. We're going to begin with the wrong side um, facing up. On your cast off end, make sure you leave a very long tail for weaving and for crocheting later. I left about, I would say, three feet. So this is your cast off um, tail. We're going to count over five stitches. I mean, uh, six stitches. So, let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six. And we're going to catch the next four stitches. One, two, three, and four. And pull your waist yarn through. We're going to do the same for the opposite side. So get a little waist yarn and thread your needle. Count up six stitches. One, two, three, four, five, six. And pick up the next four. One, two, three, four stitches. We'll need these stitches held later when we take apart the waist yarn. Next, we are going to seam the sides together, like so. We're going to take your tail in and thread your needle. And let's fold our work close. So now it'll look like you're on the right side, facing up. To do this, I try to curl my ends together so it's easier to see my work as I go. Let me zoom in so you guys can see how I'm working. Okay, we're gonna call each row cousins. If you haven't done this before, this is a row and this is a row. And we're gonna be connecting the two rows. So I'll show you. So here's your tail end. We're gonna go in, I'm sorry, this is a row. And next one right next to it is a row. We're going to go into the first row, pick up half of the loop, half of the um, loop, and go into the cousin row and pick up that loop. So you just combine the two and pull. We're going to repeat on the other side. We're going to go through the one we came up. So this would be, it's hard to see. I lost all my work. So this would be our first loop. 
right here and we'll go into the cousin loop right next to it right here and pull and we're going to repeat you can tell we came up from this row here so we're going to go back in pick up half the stitch and pick up the cousin stitch right next to it and pull and back to the other side you can tell we came up from this stitch here so we're going to go back in pick up the half and pick up the cousin right next to it and pull once again we're going to go back into one we just came out of you can tell we came out of this stitch because this is our working yarn so we're going to go back in through that loop and go into the cousin row connect them and pull I'll show you one more time you can tell we came up from this row here so we're going to go back in then pick up the cousin stitch right next to it the row next to it and pull we're going to continue this until you make it into your um, waist yarn markers alright we've completed those stitches and once you make it to um, your markers don't do anything special just let your waist yarn hang and now we're going to work on the opposite end I took a little bit of yarn to to stitch those uh, last four stitches so just like the other side I fold my ends over so it's easier to work and I'm just going to go up through the first stitch and I'm going to leave a little tail I'll tie a knot in it later All right, from this end we're going to go in through the first stitch and pick up the cousin stitch right next to it and go back over go back in through the stitch you came out of and pick up its cousin stitch right next to it my work is a little bit blurry Oh, the phone's ringing. Okay, sorry, I had to pause the video to answer the phone. Okay, where was I? Now we'll work our way back to the other side. We came up through this stitch, so we'll go back in again and pick up the cousin stitch right next to it. Try not to snag your waist yarn. All right, we'll go back to the other side. Let's see if we can find the stitch where we came out of. Sometimes I have trouble seeing it. So I usually tug on a yarn to find. So it came from this hole. So I pick up this stitch and its cousin. Continue to seam up the side and I'll meet you when you make it to your stitch markers. Okay, I seamed up the ends and we're just going to do nothing right now but take your needle part and we're going to turn your work inside out I know there's lots of threads everywhere and we're going to remove your waist yarn I'll do one side first so you can see Or my yarn got snagged but I removed the waist yarn from front one end and you can see how the stitch marker held on to those last four yarns so remove your waist yarn from the other end and I'll meet you when your waist yarn is gone okay now our work should be the right side facing up you remember that original tail end that's what we're gonna that long one that's what we're gonna use to crochet we're gonna play single crochets in each of the loops and also to close off the holes we're going to place two single crochets in between 
Well, if you don't understand, I'll show you how to do that now. So take your five millimeter crochet hook and you see where your yarn comes out? We're going to single crochet. I mean, we're going to chain a stitch here. So chain one. So that'll be um, considered one single crochet. Single crochet into the next four loops. One. Two. Three. Four. Now we're going to place two single crochets in here to help fill in this gap. The first single crochet will go where your uh, tail end from your last when you seam your work together. Remember where you left off? It's just short tail end. We're going to single crochet into that space. So this is where we left off. We're going to single crochet in that space. And now we're going to single crochet in another space. You can pick anywhere to help close off the gap. I am going to choose hmm, right about here. Single crochet. So those are your two. Now place four more single crochets into the little um, waist yarn loops. One, two, three, and four. And see, once again, we'll have a big gap to close this off. I'm going to put an extra stitch. Your first stitch here was um, stitch number one to help fill the gap. And this will be stitch number two. I place mine not in this uh, large loop right here, but in a stitch right next to it. It doesn't have to be precise. So put a single crochet there. And we are going to slip stitch to join to the very first stitch, if I can find it. Yep, and now we can fasten off our work. Find my scissors. And you can remove your waist yarn. You can turn your work inside out. You remember those loose stitches that we had before that I said you can just leave be? I would suggest now you tying them off. I don't do anything special. So here's that first original loop stitch. All right, that's tied off. I'll weave this in when I crochet. And that middle one, let's tie that one off. Now it's time to move on to the, the border. I'm trying to stop saying tuh. I've realized while watching my video, I don't say two, I say tuh. <laughs> so sorry about that. We're gonna work on the border of our fingerless gloves. Now we're going to start the border. We're going to be working into the loops. Usually, um, I'll show you up close. If you look close, uh, you'll notice loops followed by lot knots followed by loops. We're going to be working into the loops. I'll insert a clearer picture of exactly what I'm talking about right about now. Notice the little fingers pointing to the loop gaps. You'll see a loop knot, loop, knot. We'll be working into the loops. Okay, but since we're facing the opposite side, it's going to be a little bit more tough to see the loops. So you might have to turn your work. I'm going to want to work over this so it won't be as messy. 
So I'll connect my work here and attach my black yarn. We're going to single crochet, I mean chain one, then single crochet into the same spot. We're going to place one single crochet in each of the loop stitches all the way around. So find your loop and single crochet. Find your loop. We're working over that old yarn. Single crochet. Like I said, it's kind of hard to find a loop when you're facing the correct side up. There it is. Single crochet. Continue to place one single crochet all the way around in each of the loop stitches and I'll meet you back at the other side. We have made it back around and we are going to slip stitch to join into the very first single crochet. And we're going to chain one. <coughs> Excuse me. And we're going to place one half double crochet into the same stitch and in each stitch across. So half double crochet in each of the stitches across. I'll meet you when you complete all of your half double crochets. Made it back around and we're going to slip stitch to join into the very first half double crochet. Chain two, one, two. Now we're going to begin front post, back post, double crochet. If you know me, this is one of my favorite stitches, so it's pretty simple. Follow along. So yarn over. Go into the. It's very hard to see because it's black yarn. The very first stitch we're going to go into the post instead of the um, top stitch of it to push your yarn to push your um, half double crochet to the front. Yarn over and pull through all three. That is a front post half double crochet. Now we're going to do a back post. You're going to go behind the work to push your stitch backwards and complete a normal half double crochet. Now front post half double crochet. Push your work forward the post and complete your half double crochet. We're going to do back post, front post, half double crochet all the way around. I'll meet you at the completion. We've made it back around and we're going to slip stitch to join into the very first front post half double crochet. And fasten off your work. You're going to repeat the same exact pattern as this top as you would on a bottom. So put a row of single crochet followed by a row of half double crochet followed by another row of front post back post half double crochet and slip stitch to join. Also make sure you weave in all your ends and we'll make a flower for the top of our gloves. Okay you should have completed the bottom part of your glove and now we're going to work on the flower. You don't have to use the flower but you can use your own pattern or just leave it as is. So I'll show you how to get that done. We're going to begin by making a magic ring. Chain one. We're going to place ten single crochets into the same ring. One, two, and three. Continue to put um, ten single crochets into the magic ring. And I'm sorry, if you hear a little person sniffing in the background, my son got a cold and he has issues with blowing his nose. So sorry about if you hear um, silent sniffing in the back. We have made it back around and we're going to slip stitch to join into the very first single crochet. Pull your magic ring tight. Now we're going to chain one and single crochet into the very same space. <clears throat> I feel like I'm losing my voice. 
chain two, one, two, skip a space, this one, and single crochet into next. Chain two, one, two, skip a space, single crochet into the next. Looks like my video is not close enough. There we go. Chain two, one, two, skip a space, single crochet into the next. Do that all the way around. We made it back around and we'll do the last one together. Chain two, one, two, and we're going to single crochet into the very first single crochet. You should have five little loops. Let's count them. One, two, three, four, five. Perfect. So we are going to chain one. We're going to single crochet into the very first chain two space. We're over here, but we're going to single crochet into this space. Chain one. Place two double crochets into the very same space. One. Two. Chain one. Single crochet into the same space. And we'll repeat. Single crochet into the next chain two space. Chain one. Place two double crochets into the same space. One. <clears throat> and two. Chain one. Single crochet into the same space. I'll show you one more time. So single crochet into the next space, chain one, place two double crochet into the very same space, one, two, chain one, and single crochet into the same space to finish the petal. We're going to do that all the way around. It should be a total of five petals. We've made it back to the beginning. You should have five petals. And we're going to slip stitch the join into the very first single crochet. Now I need you to chain four. One, two, three, four. Turn your work. We are going to slip stitch to join into each of the single crochets going around. So we got our chain four, your single crochet from the previous row. I'm sorry, we're going to slip stitch. I don't know if I said that, slip stitch or single crochet, but we're slip stitching. Slip stitch, chain four, one, two, three, four. Find the previous single crochet and we're going to slip stitch. Nothing complicated. Chain four again. One, two, three, four. Find the previous single crochet and slip stitch. We're going to do that all the way around. Chain four. One, two, three, four. Previous single crochet and slip stitch. Let's do the last one together. One, two, three, four. I just slip stitch around the very first chain. Slip stitch. Chain one. Turn your work. Here's what your flower looks like. And you'll have these little loops in the back. We're going to be working into these loops. So I need you to single crochet into the first loop. And we're going to repeat the pattern that we did from this row. Chain one and place two double crochets into the same space. One, two, chain one, place a single crochet into the same space. 
Now into the very same space again, we're going to chain one and place two double crochets into the same loop. So we're having two petals into the same flower. One, two, now chain one and single crochet into the same space. And now you have two petals on the same loop stitch. Now we're going to repeat in the next one. Put a single crochet into the next chain loop, chain space. Chain one, place two double crochets into the same space. One, two, chain one, single crochet into the same space. Now make some room, you can push your petal over, chain one again, and place two double crochets into the same space. One, two, chain one, and single crochet into the same space. We're going to repeat that pattern all the way around, placing two petals into each of the stitch. I'll meet you back at the other side. All right, we made it back around and we're going to slip stitch to join into the very first single crochet and fasten off your work. Once you're done, place your flower in your glove. Just know when you do put your flower in your glove, it will be off center. Let me show you why. Oops, see how it's off center? Let me put it on my hand. But when I put the glove on, it is now centered just because of the way that your hand is shaped. Okay guys, I hope you liked the video. Don't forget to click that subscribe button. I come out with three new videos every single week. I'll see you guys on the very next tutorial.